So far, the string methods that we've seen all follow this pattern. We call the method name with empty parentheses. We don't provide any information or values when we execute it. Now we're going to see a different set of string methods. They work in the exact same way, the same syntax, except inside of the parentheses, we pass in additional information to modify their behavior. Methods are just actions, uppercase this, trim this, lowercase this, but some of them, like replace, require additional information. What are you replacing and what do you want to replace it with? Or if we are searching for something, we need to specify what we're searching for. So those values that we pass in between the parentheses are called arguments. We can pass in one argument and sometimes we pass in multiple, as in the case of replace. What are you replacing? What do you want to replace it with? So I'm going to show you a couple examples of these methods. So they work the same way, we just pass in information. Here's the first one, it's called index of. Now index of will tell you where in a string a given string occurs, a substring. So here I have cat dog as the variable TV show, and if I call index of cat, it returns zero, meaning cat comes at the very beginning of the string. It's not just looking for C, it's looking for cat, the entire substring, the entire match. C-A-T starts at index zero. Then if we do dog, index of dog, we get three, which means it starts at zero, one, two, three. Index of three, or the fourth character. Here's a quick example, baseball.index of, let's look for where ball occurs in this string, and it tells us it starts at index four. If I just did B, this one's important because there are two Bs. It only tells me the first instance of B, the first occurrence, which is at index zero. It is case sensitive, so if I instead had baseball with capital B, it ignores that one, that's not a match, but this one is a match at index four. Now, if we're looking for something that doesn't exist in the string, like baseball.index of entertaining, which clearly entertaining does not exist inside of the world of baseball, we get negative one. So negative one is the representation of not found. Anytime you call index of with a value that is not found, you'll get negative one. And you'll often see people use this once we talk about conditional logic, people will write code that checks. If index of something equals negative one, that means the thing you're looking for is not there. So that's pretty much it for index of. It returns a number always. Sometimes it will be the index of something you're looking for, and if it's not found, you get negative one. The next method we'll take a look at is called slice. Slice does kind of what it sounds like. It takes slices of an existing string, and it gives you a piece of it. And it works in a couple different ways. If we pass in a single number, let's just keep working with baseball. If we pass in a single number to slice, like maybe four, it's going to take a slice starting at index four all the way to the end. So in our case, that's ball. But remember, strings are immutable, just like all the methods we've seen so far. This is not altering baseball. It's not changing the value if we had it in a variable. Like if we had let sport equal baseball, and then we do sport.slice for sport is unchanged, it's still baseball and we could save this to a separate variable if we wanted it. So that's one use for slice, if you pass in a single number. Also, if we tried something like sport.slice40, there is no index 40, we get an empty string. When we use slice, we can also pass in two numbers, two indices. The first one is where we should start the slice, and then the second one is where the slice should end. So let's test it out. We'll do this on superhero. And if we do a dot slice going from index zero, and then we go until index five, we'll end up with super. Notice that it is not inclusive because index five is zero, one, two, three, four, five. That would be the H right here. It stops right before that H. So it starts at zero and it goes basically to four, one less than what we have here. So we end up with super. If I wanted to slice, let's go with he, the word, I guess it's not a very exciting word, but two characters in the middle. We need to go from this index, which is zero, one, two, three, four, five. And then we wanna go until seven. And we get he. 
let's say I had a bunch of prices that people had written like 50.60 and I wanted to remove the dollar sign on all of them, what I could do is slice. So just do slice from one to the end. And now I get the number isolated. Even though it's a string, I could then turn it into a number, which we haven't seen how to do yet. But this is a common use case. If you have data that follows a pattern and you're trying to isolate a certain portion of it, you use slice. And then we have one more method that accepts arguments that we'll talk about. There are many, many others that come with uh, built in in JavaScript, many string methods, but the last one we'll see is called replace. And it also does what it sounds like. You specify what you want to replace, what string, and what you want to replace it with. So if I had the string baseball is entertaining and I called replace on it, I could replace entertaining if I wanted to with how about okay and now we get baseball is okay if i try it with something like this ha 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 dot replace and i want to replace ha with uh hmm what should we replace it with how about he 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 let's see what happens it only replaces the first one so there are ways of replacing all occurrences in a string, but it involves a regular expression, which is something we have not talked about. So we're not gonna go into it, but if you wanna learn more, go check it out on MDN, look up replace. So it replaces the first occurrence. And of course, if it doesn't find the thing that you're trying to replace, like if I tried to replace ha with he, there is no ha, so it's unchanged. It doesn't give us an error, nothing really happens. It just doesn't replace it. So that's replace, you pass in two values. The thing that all of these methods have in common is that we pass in at least one value. So we had methods where we pass nothing in like trim or two lowercase, two uppercase, and we have methods where we pass specific values in. Index of, where we specify what we're looking for. Tell me the index of cats. Here we have slice, you can pass in one number in order to go from one index to the end of the string, or you can pass in two numbers to get a specific slice. And we had replace where you pass in two values. If we go back to the docs here, I'm on MDN. Uh, right now I'm on two uppercase for string, but if we go to the left again, we can see all the different methods. If we look at slice, just to give you an idea of how you read these docs, if you look down right here where it says syntax, the syntax is string.slice, and then we must pass in a begin index, so the starting index, and then we have an end index, but notice there's these brackets around it. This is a way of telling you this is optional. Slice works if you only specify begin index, as we've seen. If we only pass in five, it works. But if you want, you can also pass in an end index. So if you see documentation like this on MDN, whenever you see these brackets under the syntax portion of a documentation page, this is telling you it's optional. 